protesting in the age of surveillance isn't what it used to be. Today, the police have tools to follow your life 24-7 wherever you go. And there's been plenty of evidence of law enforcement tracking peaceful protesters, journalists and activists. Without a warrant, of course. Gotta keep that law and order. Most of that surveillance is enabled with special tech like drones or IMSI catchers. But the ultimate tracking device is the one you are carrying in your pocket at all times. But carrying your phone in a protest is important. To navigate the streets, call your lawyer in case you get detained, or to capture the police actions taken against your freedom to exercise your constitutional rights. So let's look at the police surveillance capabilities comprehensively and see what you can do to protect your privacy or anonymity in a peaceful protest. Even if you are not participating, send this video to your friends who are and share it all over social media so that people can get this information in time. You can support this video by engaging in likes and comments to tickle the algo in the right spot. And you can support my work by joining my channel membership or by becoming my patron. YouTube has been infuriating with demonetization and shadow banning. I bet most of you watching didn't get a notification of my last video, did you? I can't rely on YouTube ads anymore, so your help is truly appreciated. Oh, and if you have any criminal intent like looting or rioting and destroying people's lives, advice in this video is not gonna help you. This tutorial is for peaceful protesters only. The first thing you need to understand is what it means to take your phone to a protest. You should expect the police to use IMSI catchers or stingrays to intercept all radio signals in the area. An IMSI catcher acts as a rogue cell tower that your phone automatically connects to wirelessly. As soon as your device is within the range, the police collects your IMSI number uniquely assigned to your SIM card. During your time at a protest, all of your phone calls and texts can potentially be intercepted by IMSI catcher. From there, you can learn your identity and the location history of your phone straight away. If they don't have that information at hand, they can easily request it from phone carriers at no extra cost. Unless you're using a dumb phone, your phone is gonna be connected to your Google account or Apple ID. The police can request all of your location data and information about your device directly from Google or Apple, and they almost always comply. It is very likely all available hotspots during protests will be compromised or cloned by the police. So any Wi-Fi connection you make there is subject to total police surveillance that gives them access to what servers you're connecting to, what apps you're using, and whom you are communicating with. If you forget to turn off your Bluetooth for some reason, then the police can use a vast array of Bluetooth vulnerabilities to remotely compromise your device and infect it with malware for direct surveillance of everything you do on your phone. All of this technology is cheap and readily available for the police and even though they don't admit it, it's almost certain that all police departments are always using IMSI catchers or some other tools of wireless surveillance in protests. Luckily, there's a range of options that protect your identity and your data from the police. First, leave your phone at home, have a disposable phone dedicated to protests only, or take your main phone with hardened security. Leaving your phone home is gonna be the only unhackable solution. Most people are gonna need a phone, so they can take two different routes. You can either take a disposable burner phone that you purchased anonymously with cash and leave your main phone at home, or those that can't get a burden phone can take the route of encryption by encrypting their device and all communication channels, calls, texts, and DMs. We're gonna take a bottom-up approach, starting with the encryption route. If you haven't done this already, make sure your phone is in Android devices are encrypted by default if you already use an access lock. To double-check, go to your security settings and make sure the encrypt disk option is enabled. For better security, using a passcode is going to be more secure than using biometrics like fingerprint or face unlock. Use at least 8 to 12 random characters or 3 to 4 random words to create a strong passphrase that is easy to remember and type. Encrypting your device will not encrypt your external storage, so be careful where you store your photos. Don't worry about losing time when typing a lock password. You can still activate your camera from the lock screen without unlocking the phone. Try pressing a volume button with the power button or tap on the camera icon. Expect all of your calls and texts to be intercepted during protests and all Wi-Fi and cellular internet connections to be man in the middle attack by the police. Secure your communication with end-to-end -end encryption. Signal is the best messaging app for encrypted one-on-ones and group chats. Take advantage of Signal's disappearing messages and select a short enough time for the messages to self-destruct even if your phone is stolen. 
Stay away from sending SMS texts as those have no protection whatsoever. If you need to send an SMS text, use an app like Silence that can send end-to-end -end encrypted SMS texts provided your contacts also have it installed. Signal does use your phone number, so if you want to create a disposable anonymous account to communicate with fellow protesters, you can use Wickerme or Briar. They both require no personal information to create an account. Wickerme provides disappearing messages like Signal. Briar, on top of being anonymous and encrypted, is also censorship resistant. Briar is peer to peer, meaning there are no central servers, but users store their messages locally. It can send messages over Wi Fi and Bluetooth, so no internet access is required. When connected to the internet, Briar routes your traffic through Tor to protect your identity. The police can shut down or monitor the internet, but they can't crack Briar conversations without expensive, targeted actions. For active navigation in the streets, disable location services so that Apple or Google cannot store your location history. Download an offline map of your local area using OpenStreetMap automatic navigation directions. This is a free and open source replacement of Google Maps that doesn't track you. If you don't need internet or cell phone access, you can turn on airplane mode and use GPS only for navigation. If you're planning to take photos, be mindful of the metadata of your pics and identities of fellow protesters. ObscuraCam takes care of both of these issues as it automatically blurs faces and scraps all identifiable metadata from your images. If you plan to upload your images to social media, use Image Scrubber or Scrambled Exif to delete image metadata before you do so. Signal automatically scraps metadata from all messages before sending, so texting the images to yourself through Signal will do the trick too. Another method is to transfer your photos to your laptop, take screenshots of the individual photos, and upload those screenshots instead of original pics. You can take this to a whole new level by taking all of these steps on an anonymously purchased burner phone. Leave your main device at home and go to a central mobile store in your town. You're gonna look for a prepaid phone that doesn't require any identifiable information to activate it and one you can pay for in cash. You may be able to get an unlocked device and buy a prepaid SIM card separately but also paid for it in cash. With a burner phone, your ultimate goal is to prevent the police from knowing your location history and your true contacts, which can reveal where you live or work and thus tell them who you are. Be careful not to bring your phone home without taking necessary precautions. Do not activate your burner phone at your home address. First of all, you need to disable location services in your phone's settings. This should legally bind Apple and Google not to store your location history, but it won't prevent wireless surveillance by law enforcement. Activate your SIM card away from your home and try any combination of these options. Turn on airplane mode, turn off your phone during commute and turn it back on for protests only, or put it inside a functioning Faraday bag for the commute and take it out for protests only. Airplane mode will disable Bluetooth, cellular, and Wi-Fi signals, but it can still leave GPS on. Switching off a phone should disable all radio signals, but this can't be verified unless you can take out the battery. Faraday bags, if done properly, should block all electromagnetic interference and radio signals, including GPS, from receiving or transmitting any information. You can make a Faraday bag yourself. Place the phone inside a non-conductive box and wrap the box from the outside in a non-conductive material such as aluminum foil. Before trusting your Faraday bag, make sure to test it by calling yourself or connecting via Bluetooth. A successful Faraday bag should result in your calls being rejected and your other Bluetooth device should not be able to find your phone. If you can't make a functioning Faraday bag, Mission of Darkness makes commercial Faraday bags for various devices that should do the job. If you manage to get a truly anonymous burner phone, then your anonymity in a protest should be safe even if the police captures your phone number with an MZ catcher. However, don't bring your burner SIM card home while active. Turn on airplane mode when leaving the protest, take out the SIM card or put the phone inside a Faraday bag for extra precaution. If you have photos and videos to upload on social media, leave the airplane mode on and transfer your pics to a device with internet access. Before uploading them, scrap all the metadata. As mentioned earlier in the video, it should be safe to use offline GPS navigation in airplane mode. Instead of Google Maps, get an offline map of your area from OpenStreetMap automatic navigation directions. You should be okay to use it even for your commutes to and from the protests, 
but be sure to delete your routes in case the police seizes your phone. The most secure system is the one that doesn't exist. If there is nothing to hack, they can't hack. So this one is for those of you who won't miss leaving your phone at home and going out there off the grid style. At this point, your only worries of being identified is through facial recognition or identifiable profile. This is why you need to cover your face and become a gray man or a woman. During a pandemic, you have the perfect opportunity to wear a mask that covers as much of your face as possible. Take one that covers all important aspects of your face, which will render facial recognition useless. Don't forget to cover your eyes with sunglasses and wear a head cover that doesn't stick from the crowd. Your hairstyle should be as bland as possible too. For clothing, try to blend in with the group. Pick monochrome colors with no brands or logos. Something that is easily forgettable and blends in with the crowd or urban surroundings is the best choice. Bring in a change of clothes with you in case you get gassed or pepper sprayed to get rid of that irritation once the protest is over. If you have tattoos or birthmarks, try to cover them if possible as photos of those can be uploaded to a database for tattoo recognition and used to identify you later. Protesting can get you into all sorts of legal situations. The EFF has an excellent guide on what to do when you get detained and how to behave in front of the police. It's not a legal advice, but it is something that's better to know than not. It's important to stand up for what you believe is right, but it's better if you can do it safely. By taking these steps, you're not just improving your security, you're helping others around you who might need that protection even more because they are a minority or their health conditions would make an arrest life-threatening. Post your suggestions in the comments, or just comment whatever you want. If you're upset with not being notified of my new uploads, becoming a member should solve this problem for good. You can get perks like early access or some exclusive videos, or become a patron and get access to up to 8 commentary videos a month. Share and like this video and thank you for watching.